Hi there, my name is Beth Graham, and I am a professor in the School of Communication Studies at Kent State University. I study interpersonal communication, and I focus on conversational behaviors such as turn-taking, self-disclosure, giving and receiving compliments, and what I'm going to be talking about today, how to craft effective apologies. People make mistakes all the time. Not just bad people or weak people, all people. It's the nature of being human. Making a good apology is an important conversational skill. A good apology is an art. A sincere apology shows you're taking responsibility for your actions. This can strengthen your self-confidence, self-respect, and reputation. You're also likely to feel a sense of relief when you come clean about your actions. And it's one of the best ways to restore your integrity and show your leadership skills. A strong leader can afford to admit that they are wrong sometimes. An apology opens a dialogue between yourself and the other person. Your willingness to admit your mistakes can give the other person the opportunity she or he needs to communicate with you. What's more, when you admit that the situation was your fault, you restore dignity to the person you hurt. Crafting that apology can make the person you've hurt feel better is no small feat. In fact, in order to be truly effective, an apology must contain several components. Step number one, express regret. I'm sorry. Saying I'm sorry can actually go a very long way. It lets the other person know that you're not going to blame, excuse, or deny your behavior. The other person might not expect an apology, and when you offer one, you have an effect taking the wind out of their sails. This is a communication strategy that, if sincere, can be very successful. If you're not sorry for your actions, don't apologize. Step number two, admit your wrongdoing. Your declaration of guilt, I did it. An apology is a statement of remorse that you make when you've done something wrong. Try saying something like, I messed up. I shouldn't have told that story about you in front of your new girlfriend. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Communication research tells us that 40% of people want to hear us say, I was wrong, while the other 40% most want to hear us say, I'm sorry. So do both. Step number three, ask for forgiveness and understanding. This is a tricky one. It might not be appropriate to ask for forgiveness at this time. Depending on the egregiousness of the act, it may be unrealistic to ask for forgiveness. Instead, you could say, I know I can't ask for forgiveness for drinking too much at the dinner last night and causing us to lose our best account. But perhaps in time, I can show you that I am truly sorry and maybe you might forgive me and give me another chance. Step number four, assurance is offered. Promise it won't happen again, and above all, deliver on any promises you make. While you can't undo what you did wrong, you can offer to do something that shows you value the relationship and you're invested in doing whatever you can to make it right. If you aren't sure how to make, the, make it right, just ask, is there anything I can do to make it this up to you? Can I call the account executive and apologize for my boorish behavior? Step number five. No excuses. Get rid of the ifs and buts. For example, if I offended you, I'm sorry. When you say if, what you're really saying is, I don't know why you're offended, but you seem to be, so I'm sorry. You need to own that apology. Also, stay away from buts. For example, I know I said some awful things last night, but I had just lost my job and I was in a really bad mood. When you say but, what you're really saying is, you know me, I'm likely to take my bad moods out on you, so don't take my words to, to heart. People make three common mistakes when they apologize to people. They blame, they excuse, and they sometimes deny what they've done. Avoid all three. Make the apology and let it stand on its own. Step number six, be heartfelt and sincere. There are evolutionary theories that explain why certain kinds of communication behaviors are associated with apology, shame, and embarrassment. One need only look at your dog when they have misbehaved. 
you will likely see the downward head movements, tail between their legs, and the shrinking of the body, the posture, as a sign of submissiveness. Minus the tail, this is the same kind of appearance we present when we are asking for mercy or forgiveness. So why do people avoid apologizing? Apologies take courage. When you admit you were wrong, it puts you in a vulnerable position, which can open you up to attack or blame. You may be so full of shame and embarrassment about your actions that you can't bring yourself to face the other person. And bear in mind that the law sometimes encourages us to avoid apologizing because it could be interpreted as an admission of liability or guilt. But there are so many benefits to apologizing. One of the best reasons to apologize is to reaffirm boundaries. When you're in a conflict with someone, usually there is a boundary that is crossed. If a social rule is violated or trust is broken, an apology helps to affirm what kind of future behavior is preferred. Negotiations proceed from there. When you apologize, you acknowledge that you engaged in unacceptable behavior. Ultimately, you have an opportunity to enhance the relationship because apologies can open up a line of communication with the other person. It's all on the table now. Finally, a sincere apology can also bring relief, particularly if you have guilt over your actions. We all know that feeling of being relieved of what that 10 pound weight we've been carrying around feels like. One of the best apologies I have seen lately is the one delivered by comedian Jonah Hill on The Tonight Show. After being harassed by a member of the paparazzi, Jonah Hill used a homophobic slur in response. In less than two minutes though, his apology covered all the elements we just discussed. One, he expressed regret. I am deeply sorry for anyone who's been affected by this term. Two, he admitted he was wrong, he said. The word I chose was grotesque. No one deserves to hear words like that. Three, he asked for forgiveness and understanding. He acknowledged that he let members of the LGBTQ community down. Humbly, he admitted, I don't deserve or expect your forgiveness. Four, he made no excuses. He encouraged people to use me as an example of what not to do. Don't respond to people with anger or hatred. Five, he was sincere. At one point, he was choked up, and you could tell this was very important and difficult for him to say, but he needed the, his apology to be heard. As with Jonah Hill, a sincere apology can also bring relief and an opportunity for atonement and restitution. To improve your communication with others, learn to apologize. It's a life skill I guarantee is worth mastering. You won't be sorry.